I write in support of Senator Kennedy's resolution of disapproval of the ATF's stabilizing brace rule. This rule is a dangerous attack on every American's Second Amendment rights. I want to start by telling you why this is important. Where I live in Kansas, typically we'll have one sheriff or a deputy on call at a time, and he's covering an area of 60 by 40 miles. So often the nearest law enforcement officer is 45 minutes to an hour away. Like many states, we're seeing an uptick in the rise of crime. With fentanyl flooding across our border, 20 tons of fentanyl have been seized. We can't imagine how much has been, came across this open border. But along with the fentanyl and the open border, we're seeing crime on the rise. And more and more, families feel afraid that they're not secure. Even my own wife, two weeks ago, asked me to take her out to our family gun range and give her some lessons on how to handle a weapon as well. You know, and by the way, women's favorite weapon for self-protection is a short-barreled rifle. It's what they feel comfortable. It's not loud. It's easy to control. Why are we trying to punish Americans who just want to defend themselves and practice their Second Amendment rights? In complete disregard for Americans' constitutional rights, President Joe Biden enacted an unlawful rule banning stabilizing braces, known commonly as pistol braces, allowing the ATF the full authority under the law to prosecute millions of Americans for firearms they purchased perfectly legally. Through Biden's rule, millions of responsible gun owners suddenly have become felons. And as law-abiding Kansans get the book thrown at them under this Second Amendment power grab, the president's own son commits an actual gun violation felony, and he walks away with the sweetheart deal. I ask you, what type of message does that send to law-abiding Americans, gun owners across the country? This is wrong. Americans realize this is a double standard. Sadly, this egregious policy uniquely impacts our nation's disabled veterans who use a pistol brace to handle their firearms. For some of these individuals who risk their lives for freedoms, for our freedoms, a pistol brace is the only option for safe and effective firearm use. But under this ruling, the constitutional right to bear arms is null and void if you use a stabilizing brace to operate a firearm. Now that's why the president bypassed Congress and carried out his gun-grabbing agenda through the regulatory state, demanding his ATF use a misguided interpretation of the National Firearms Act to enforce this heavy-handed policy. Let me be clear. The National Firearms Act does not does not give the ATF the authority to ban pistol braces. Congress has not, nor should it ever, give the ATF this power. Mr. President, this rule represents the largest gun grab in American history, potentially impacting as many as 40 million responsible gun owners. We refuse to accept the supersized ATF's unconstitutional power grab, and I'm proud to stand here with Senator Kennedy and defend Kansans and Louisiana's Second Amendment rights. I continue to stand firm here with all of my colleagues and oppose this executive overreach by the ATF. I yield the floor.